Now, during the Ace Beam X80 review I did a while ago, you were like, hmm, 25,000 lumens. It's, it's just too darn bright. But I did like the tasteful Christmas tree and crime scene investigator color modes. Hmm, and also I wish it did a red and blue alternating strobe. Well, then say hello to the Nikkor SRT-9 with red, green, blue, UV, strobe, and white color modes. You're like, ah, no infrared, huh? Well, uh, I guess I'll wait for the upgrade. The SRT-9 is made from aluminum and uses a Cree XHP-50 for the cool white main white light output mode. That's a mouthful. And operates all those modes easily off of a control ring. The reflector is an orange peel textured style with the main LED in the center and smaller colored LEDs and UV LEDs around the edge of the reflector. Reading is hard. It comes with the light, a holster, a manual, a lanyard, the damn box, a lanyard, and some rubber tail cap replacement things. Oh yeah, and all the colors of the rainbow. It actually has a clip too, but that's already installed on it. The output mode, starting with the luscious colors, my figures and night cores are on screen. Let's do the colors first. Urinal mint blue. Then as cash rules everything around me, green, cream, then adultery red. Then as of Then is white mode, which can be dimmed from the lowest setting all the way up to the highest with its control ring, which I measured to be between 2.1 lumens and a little over 2200 lumens at its highest. As always, if you're looking for a low moonlight mode, Nikkor isn't the best at that. Okay, the UI. It's easy and all on a ring. You have a hard power on-off on the tail where you put the batteries, arranged in the series configuration, Pop on the tail cap, which you have to press the two buttons down for. It's kind of awkward, and you have to apply a moderate amount of pressure to get it to lock. Cool. The good thing is you can feel for the clicks and the smooth parts of the control ring and get a feel of what mode you want before you even turn it on. I feel for the standby mode, which is like dead center-ish. And turn on the light. The light blinks in standby with this little indicator there, letting you know it's on. Turning the control ring right gives you white light from lowest to high. Then there's a click stop, another click gets you to tactical strobe, and you can't turn the ring any further. Now turning it left goes back through white, a click through standby, then a click through UV, then red, then green, then blue, then of course red and blue strobe, the reason you bought it, and uh, the beacon strobe. The colors, UV, and strobes aren't dimmable. And remember to turn off the tail cap when not in use to keep the light from draining your batteries. It's possible to turn the low white mode on, then turn back to get it a hair dimmer, but not much less than two lumens, and it's a little awkward to do. If you've ever owned the Jetbeam RRT01, that one went extremely low, way lower than this. The control ring is smooth, and you can always get to the easy-to-find special modes by counting the clicks when it's off. The UI is pretty good, and I wish the low end of the dimming gave you lower options. It'd be perfect then, and then I would never have to get another flashlight. The run times. I used Sanyo Panasonic 3500mAh 18650GAs for this. The SRT9 does not use low voltage protection. Who knows why? But it gives you plenty of warning through an erratic... <laughs> erratic strobe when the batteries are near drained. <laughs> only button tops work in this light. Please use protected cells only. Okay, first is turbo. I used unprotected cells for this test because I guess I didn't know. And didn't reset the clock. In the first three minutes there's a 12% drop and by seven minutes the brightness stabilizes and we've had about a 46% 46, 46 drop in brightness overall which is somewhere north of 1100 lumens. As the first hour passes we're at a 51% drop overall then comes two hours which is 54% and after about two hours the brightness starts dropping harder. It continues to run in somewhere in the mid three hour range it starts the low voltage erratic voltage blink. Ending voltage when I got back and checked the light at about 8 hours of running with the crazy blinking faintly still occurring, it was about 2.2 volts per battery. Not good. You should recycle your batteries if this happens. Using protected cells keeps this from happening. Remember, use protected cells and you're perfect. 
For this test, I set my light to somewhere in the 500 lumen range. So this is a good mid-range mode. I used protected Sanyo GAs this time. In the first hour, it looks like it gains output, but I think my light sensor cord is moving ever so slightly. So let's just say it holds its brightness constantly because it looks like it does. I've said this before that these tests are not scientific, they're just sort of real worldish simulations. So the sensor stops moving at about one hour and just holds its brightness for about five and a half hours before dropping in brightness. And the battery's low voltage protection kicks in at about six hours and 37 minutes. The batteries, again, not the flashlight. The flashlight does not have low voltage protection, just low voltage warning. Now the beam shots. Here are the lights I'll be comparing to CERT 92. Some pocketable, some holsterable. Did I make up a word? I think I did. All lights are between 1,000 and 2,200 lumens on their maximum modes. First, the CERT 9. It's not an ultra throwy light. It has a decent amount of spill and spot. It's a cool white tint. I wish it was neutral, but I wish a lot of things. Then is the O O O light R50 Seeker. It's cool and has a USB rechargeable feature. Cool as in tint, of course, not cool as in flashlights, because, you know, I don't use this light a lot because it doesn't have a decent low mode. Back to the CERT 9. Both this and the R50 use the same basic emitter. That's why I included them. Then the Nikkor MH20GT. Not as bright, but way more pocket friendly and a bit throwier. It's a good general purpose small light, and it's USB rechargeable. Every light seen here has been reviewed by me. The CERT 9 for a minute, which I detected no visible PWM on any of its modes, before going to the Zebralight SC600 Mark III. Watch my video about PWM if you don't know what that means. This is one of my main everyday carry lights because of its excellent size, excellent low modes, excellent maximum 1000-ish lumen brightness in case I need it. Also a nicer tint. The Astrolux Stainless Steel, or SS. Great tint, great light, a bit heavy, but a nice amount of throw. And a bit nicer for longer range stuff. Okay, let's wrap it up. And by wrap it up, I mean talk about color modes for the next five minutes. Now there's literature on what the color modes are useful for online, and well, color modes really aren't that useful to me. Maybe UV to see if murder or sex has happened at a various location that you are currently at. Now as far as the color modes go, sometimes that usefulness is dependent on how bright or how dim the color modes are. If you're a person who uses color modes, a filter might be a good option to retrofit a light with just white modes. None of the color modes are very dim, but all are bright enough for short range outdoor and indoor stuff. The UV is the type that you only see a little visible light from it when not looking right at it, but it illuminates stuff with UV reflective capabilities. I'm sure I described that wrong and somebody will let me know. I like the Nietzsche, the Nietzsche UV on my Ace Beam X80 light a little bit better because it seems more intense, still not a whole lot of visible light, and it lights things a little further away. Now the construction and fit and finish on this light are all pretty good. I have no idea why Nikkor just doesn't put low voltage protection in all of their lights when most companies do. It's not the first Nikkor light I've tested like this. Low voltage protection in theory keeps lights from draining their batteries lower than 2.5 volts. The control ring is great, and it's a good way to operate a light with this many modes. It's smooth and ain't jiggly. You know, of course, if you need the color modes, then good. If you like this review, subscribe, like, do the comment. The light was provided by GearBest for review. Check the description for more details if you'd like to buy it. Thanks for watching.